Welcome to BanjoBenClark.com. I'm Banjo Ben, your host here on the website that teaches you how to play all kinds of stuff like guitar and mandolin. Today is banjo. By the way, I've got this beautiful Stelling Crusader mahogany banjo here. Look at this thing. Oh my goodness. And you heard how good it sounds. Anyway, this thing's for sale. I have several Stellings there and lots of other great instruments uh, available in the store, so be sure and check that out. Today we're learning utility roles, or we're going to press further into them. You may recognize that term, utility role, from a great lesson that I uh, did with Tony Ray. And so I had more and more questions about that, about how to do that utility role over different chord progressions. So what we're going to do, we're gonna take that utility role that Tony showed us, and we're gonna learn how to manipulate it over a C and D chord, and to create more and more movement as we use it to, to perhaps make it a little less monotonous. But what an incredible thing to have under your belt uh, to provide that perfect foundation of backup for folks. If you're watching here on the website, as a Gold Pick member, you have everything you need. Right here on this page, just scroll down for the tabs and the Rhythm MP3 tracks. If you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, come on over to the website. Join as a Gold Pick member. We'd love to have you. Let's jump right in to these utility roles. Tony Ray dropped in and showed us some bag of licks that he loves to play on the banjo. And what we did first was we learned a utility role that he uses as a foundation to then build upon whenever he's playing back up. And it sounds just like this. So it's not flashy and it's not supposed to be. That's the thing I want to stress. These utility rolls are used for backup. Yes, they can be incorporated into your lead, but they're used for backups for you to provide a bed of rhythm for somebody else who's singing or playing some kind of solo. You don't want to be flashy. There are times when we're going to stretch out and do some things that may bring some attention to the banjo, but we're just wanting to provide a steady bed of rhythm. And one of the questions that I kept getting on the forum is, well, what do we do whenever we go to other chord um, chords in the song? Because we're not just going to hang over a G. So that's what we're going to look at today. We're going to look at how to take this basic utility role and learn how to manipulate it for other chords and then how to produce some movement in there as well. Let's go ahead and look at the tab for the regular utility roll. Maybe you've already learned it if you watched Tony's lesson, but it starts out with a quarter note pinch, and then we're going to slide into the fifth fret. Then we're going to have a reverse roll first. Then we'll go into a forward roll, back to a reverse, and then a pull off, and then we're done. And it, it works really great because it's a two measure roll, so it stretches out over a couple measures. In, in verses, or verses, in measures three and four, we're just going to repeat it again. Now, one thing that I did in the lesson preview was I played it with a bit of a swing with some weighted notes. Maybe you might call it groove. And that's something that you really need to listen for especially with the folks that are playing around you. So you've got other people in the band and they may be playing very straight time. At which point you would want to also play straight time. You want to blend in with them. But if they've got more of that swing thing going on, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba you need to pick up on that as well and do it in the same groove as them. So And you can do that more and less. And it's something that requires practice. It's something that requires listening. Now let's take the same basic roll pattern and let's look at what it may look like over a C chord. Now as we look there at measure six, here's one thing that I'm going to assume. I'm going to assume that we're not playing a super duper major sounding song, meaning that it's okay to have some of the notes in the C chord missing and still be sounding good. And that's one thing that I want you to see is that we all don't always have to play a full C chord and play all of those triad notes over a C chord. We can leave some of those out. The position that I want you to grab is just a partial C. So a middle finger over the second fret down here, then your index over the first fret here. And let's leave that first string open, okay? And that D string being open is going to sound just fine over most songs that go to that C chord. Now you'll notice if you'll compare back to measures one through five, that our pattern for our pick hand is going to remain the same the first time through. The only thing different is that instead of a slide, of course, we're going to hammer on. But then we're still gonna pull off. And then in measure eight, I wanted to show you just a variation of that. If you wanted to make it a little more um, C sounding, 
then you can move up and play that second string, getting the root note in there, sound like this. So you can do either one, you could even mix them up. But let me play this line for you slowly and you'll see the difference. As we play a little bit faster, you'll hear how the first one is less major sounding. And the second one, starting measure eight, is going to be a little more major sounding. Just from introducing that root note. And the same thing is true whenever we look at the D chord. Okay, so um, I'm actually only going to play a one finger D chord. I'm going to work that second fret over the third string. And then I'm going to hammer on into the major third at the end of measure 12. That is going to sound a bit major. And one thing that we can do to substitute that, we see there measure 14. We could just do a little choke down there or bend. Sounds great. Now there's um, many, many more things that we can do here. And that's what I want to look at now, because if you were to play this utility role over and over and over again, it would become a bit monotonous, but if we add some movement, such as this, then we start having more moving parts and it gets more and more interesting. Let's do that and put it all together.